Welcome to Media Minute. For this episode, we're checking out some haunted movie sets, Muppets, some of our favorite monsters, and we're going to check out some classic arcade games. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And we're kicking things off by throwing things directly at Rachel because yep, she's going to tell us, she's been doing some research yes. about haunted movie sets. Yes, yeah. I have. Yeah. So what do you got for us? Well, I didn't want to go with the typical ones because I feel like everybody knows about The Exorcist, The Poltergeist, like all those kind of stuff. So I decided to go a little outside the box, I guess. Um, the first set I have is actually like the entire Conjuring franchise. Apparently they've had no hmm. luck with any of their movies. So um, Annabelle, for example, there was lighting fixtures falling on actors. Hmm. Uh, the director... Did get hurt? Pa- Sorry? Did anyone get hurt? Uh, not that I saw. It was like near misses. It was like one of those like, oh, you just moved out of the wig. Who fell Perfect call. timing, yeah. <laughs> but um, apparently the director too, he saw something scratch the window. And the thing is, the demon in Annabelle has three talons or three fingers and he swore in the moonlight on the dust he saw three fingers Uh, so like hmm. they were kind of freaking out a little bit i don't know if that was probably just like one of those like i'm gonna say this to kind of promote the show (laughs) or like they were doing those uh like kind of viral oh yeah those uh, strange marketing things yeah they're like yeah yeah. basically prank videos yeah okay baby pop out of the uh (laughs) yeah uh, i remember those yeah yeah and also, kind of popular for one. Yeah. Was that them? I don't think so. It could have been, but I'm know. not too sure. From what I read, there was, there's nothing about viral videos or ah. babies popping out of things. Things. That was just an example. Oh no, I know, but just. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the next one was uh, the Conjuring. There was uh, mysterious bruises appearing on actors. They had no idea why. And one of the main actors, the one that actually played Lorraine Warren, I can't remember her name, and I feel terrible because I've seen her in a lot of stuff. But anyways. She was actually so freaked out by the movie that she kept the script outside of her house. Like, she wouldn't let the script in her house because it gave her such a really bad feeling. And then she woke up one morning and her laptop was completely slashed. Like, she opened the screen and there was slash marks in the laptop. And there she's like, how did this happen? So they th- she thinks that's what it was. Like, Spooky. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then the last one was The Nun. But I feel like if you're going to do stuff about religion you're you're bound to attract that kind of stuff you know uh but for that one the director actually encountered two spirits while filming in a what was it an abandoned romanian fortress Hmm. he was filming and he thought he was just there were two crew members he did the scene and then he turned around to like tell him that it was good to go and they were gone Ooh, ghost crew members Mm. yeah so i don't know are they are they unionized (laughs) the ghost crew members yeah is that free labor i don't know yeah, maybe if, if we can hire ghosts. Yeah. I mean, they left when they found out there wasn't any free booze. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's understandable. <laughs> Can't <blame you. laughs> that actually took me a solid second to realize. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> booze. booze. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then the second one was actually Twilight Zone the movie. They had yeah, I heard about that one. some crazy stuff happen. It wasn't didn't some like a child die or something like that. Actually, three people died on set. Damn. Yeah. Really? Well, yeah. So basically, I guess like the main director, uh, him and Steven Spielberg were originally supposed to co-direct it, but this guy was cutting corners left, right, and center because he didn't want to spend the money. And Steven Spielberg was like, "Nope, I ain't having none of that. Like, this is just a bad thing." Yeah. Uh, they ended mm-hmm. up doing a helicopter stunt that went terribly wrong, and it ended up slicing two child actors and an adult actor like just. Mm-hmm. Bits. The director ended up getting charged know, with ma- three counts of manslaughter, but he ended up getting acquitted for it. Which I was kind of like, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. you know, yeah. it's one of those. I think there's plenty of blame to go around. Yeah, probably. There, there's probably failure on like all levels. Yeah, <laughs> on the on the positive storm. for that, if there is a positive, I guess, um, because of that incident, they actually have created way more stricter uh, regulations when it comes to being on set. Yeah. So if that didn't happen, who knows what sets would have been like now i feel like it was only a matter of time until yeah yeah but it just like it's unfortunate because like the two kids were like seven and like eight like they were little what a way to go as well yeah like yeah definitely up in flames it's not not the way you want to go no and the last one (laughs) i thought was kind of funny uh is ghost like that movie with Patrick Swayze, <laughs> how he's a ghost. Uh, uh, the haunting ghost. of Whoopi Goldberg. Right? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was that, like, I don't know. I was like, there's no way. But so apparently uh, the same soundstage that they used to film it was um, where Heather O'Rourke, the little girl from the Poltergeist, that's where she was, like, last, I guess, healthy and functional. And apparently the uh, the 
uh, crew for Ghost like kept hearing like a child laugh that sounded exactly like Heather's Ooh. and like little footsteps mm. and like you know just mischievous things like that. And so they were like, "Holy crap!" Turns it's, out it's just her. The sound guys being jerks. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. But um, yeah, and there's like there's a ton of other ones, but those three kind of stuck out to me the most. I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. be I, be interesting to work on a haunted set. I think. Right. As long as, as, long as it's. Nobody's getting hurt or anything, but uh, yeah. yeah, having lights yeah, fall on yeah. you is, is yeah. Yeah, that's not that's yeah, Phantom of the Opera type stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you could not do the kids getting killed by helicopters, yeah, that yeah. would be good. That'd be uh, nice. Well, yeah. I'd like a friendly ghost. Yeah, yeah. Like a Casper, where you at? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's just working the catering. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Just Casper, what's going on, dude? Like you, free booze for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> hey, 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 like booze. I can't Actually, believe I used that twice. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, might as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Toby Hooper's had a bad run because he did Poltergeist, which obviously was. Yeah. And uh, apparently the Texas Chainsaw Massacre shoot was just nightmarish. Oh, yeah? Like middle of Texas, middle of summer. Ooh. Yeah. It's not a good mix. Dozens of people just cramped and shoved into this like old house and there was baking and it stunk and people were getting sick. Have you ever uh, looked into, uh, there was a island of Dr. Moreau? Ooh, yeah. yeah, with Marlon Mar- was it Marlon Brando? Yeah, and Val Kilmer. Yeah, if you Favorite ever Batman. if you ever look it up, that movie was cursed. Oh yeah, like the director like left the set and because they fired him, and then he came back and pretended to be a crew member. <laughs> oh yeah, like the director was just like completely insane. Yeah. Oh, I remember. I remember briefly reading something about that. Yeah, there's yes. some uh, some pretty good YouTube videos like talking about like the whole island of Doctor Moreau thing, and it's just. <laughs> It's just crazy. Yeah. It wasn't haunted, but it was cursed. <laughs> yeah. It was cursed. Yeah. Well, Maybe a self fulfilling curse, yeah. but uh, still. Well, there's, there's some films like that, though, where it's like they've been trying to get it made. Wasn't there like that one Monty Python one? Uh, not Monty Python, but like um, one of the oh, guys. Oh, you're talking about uh, Don Quixote? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, Terry Gilliam tried to get that going for like almost 30 years. Johnny Depp was on board and just couldn't do whatever it. could yeah. go wrong went wrong and Yikes. never got the movie made those windmills are nasty <laughs> they'll get you <laughs> yeah yeah actually uh, do I have any? Chris is thinking he's thinking he's, he's thinking, thinking. he's thinking the gears actually no speaking of that movie um there's a documentary about it about how it just failed on Fell every apart. level yeah that documentary was supposed to be just a behind the scenes kind of <laughs> like bonus feature. And they had to turn it into. And, yeah, it turned, it turned out to be the movie. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> I was like, well, we got no actual movie. What about that behind the scenes stuff? Let's use it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they salvaged something out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it wasn't a total write off, I suppose. No, no. Uh, so we've been uh, kind of looking at some of some older shows. Yep. Uh, yep, yep. The Storyteller on <laughs> Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah, such a crazy I show. I love that. It, it's fabulous. It is. First of all, John Hurt, who's the host, yep. Yep. does like a terrific job. Oh, he does. Uh, what, is he a troll? It's just like, a guy with re- big ears. Yeah, yeah, I guess they like, don't really address it, do No, they? I think yeah. they just try to make him look like as whimsical as possible. So they're like big nose, big ears, yep. you know. More whimsy. Yeah. More. This is Jim <laughs> Henson. More whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Poor John Hurt. How he survived that, I'll never know. Yeah. What an amazing show. I didn't even I didn't even know about it until like a couple of days ago. I, like I, I remembered it being on vaguely, but I it only lasted like two seasons. Like the first seasons they do like more general folklore and then the yeah. second season's all like uh, Greek oh, cool. uh, mythology. Yeah, the, the, I think the Amazon Prime one that like I, I think we watched it was like it was just the first season. We didn't see anything about the second season. It, it's on there. I, Is it? I, I saw it listed yesterday. Um, How did we miss that? I think it's a different know. host. They, oh. they still have the dog. <laughs> if there's anything, there's a Muppet dog voiced by Jim Henson's son. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. Who also voiced Hoggle. Hoggle from the Labyrinth. Yeah. There you go. It was yeah. funny. I heard his voice. I was like, Oh my God! I know that guy. <laughs> But uh, now, if you're a fan of like folklore and uh, Jim Henson puppets, puppetry, Absolutely. like a lot of the creatures and stuff, they'll they'll use like physical puppets. Yeah, and very well done. And uh, yeah, it's crazy for like a TV show. Yeah, they went ham. They put so much effort in. Plus, there. for there's like folklore stories. Like usually yeah. at the start of the episode, they're like, "This is taken from Celtic mythology," or "This is taken from yeah. a Russian story." So yeah, a lot of a lot of German folktales. Yeah, yeah. When, well, yeah. is Stone Soup? Is that a German? That was Celtic, I, am, I think. Yeah, it? yeah. That was. A, I totally forgot about that story. That until was a then. wild, yeah, wild story. That is, uh, it's, it, it's uh, a screaming hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a. Uh, 
actually in that story, uh, John Hurt's storyteller is like the main character yeah. in the story, which they normally don't do. Usually, yeah. it's about someone yeah. else. And uh, it's kind of some disturbing shots. Yeah, yeah very. It, it got really surreal. Yeah. If you're into like weird and just crazy things, yeah. it's definitely worth the watch. <laughs> like, it's, it's, yeah, it's always oh, amazing. Was I supposed to say something? Oh no, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's always amazing to see like what Jim Henson's uh, Creature Workshop like worked on. Oh yeah, it's uh, nuts. It's like your childhood, or at it least is. my childhood. Oh yeah, mine too, for um, sure. Rewatched the the dinosaur series recently because that's on Disney Plus oh, now. Right. I love that show. I had a moment. Yeah, it's like all like animatronic dinosaur characters. Well, it's people yeah. in suits, and then the heads are like animatronic. That. But it's so well done. Like the expressions. Yeah, yeah on, that's crazy. On the uh, di- on the dinosaurs, you're like, like they, how? <laughs> how? How did they do that? Like they knew what they were doing. They also did the uh, the Ninja Turtles for the first two movies. Awesome. Nice. Is, some of my favorite childhood movies. Yeah, Actually, yeah. before we get past dinosaurs, the ending of that show was super bleak. Yeah, it's apocalyptic. It, yeah, it's yeah, just the world ends. Everybody it's dies. At the end. Dinosaurs. I forgot about the ending. Yeah, yes. super <laughs> it's like depressing. It's yeah. like, hey, well, we're all dying. We're all good. It's, a, it's like a sitcom, and then psych. It's like, whoa. And here comes a volcano. Yeah. I think it was a volcano. Uh, a volcano is part of it. It's like there's a bug, and then they the last bug dies off, so it's not eating these vines, and then. They put out uh, pesticides to kill the vines and stuff like that, and the pesticides like block out the sun. So it's like wow. the last shot is like the dinosaur family looking out the window yeah, as yeah. the snow falls. <laughs> it's like super dark. Yeah, wow. really dark. Okay. Yeah. Still. You know, you think of Jim Henson, you always think of like you kind of happy upbeat. stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, they they did Sesame Street and <laughs> yeah, same time. Oh. Random fun fact about Sesame Street. Sorry, this just hit me like a bolt of lightning. I was on Twitter the one day. I don't know. You're know, just Twittering, I guess. And uh, Big Bird apparently is played by different birds around the world. So, like, oh, yeah. Brazil has a different Big Bird than, like, America. America has a different Big Bird than Russia and, like, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it was kind of funny because Big Bird, like, his Twitter account, because Big Bird has a Twitter account. Of course um, he does. <laughs> but, like, he, uh, he was posting photos, and he's like, oh, this is my cousin so-and-so. He's in Brazil, and this is my cousin so-and-so in Russia. And I remember going through it, and I'm like, that's crazy. Because, like, I totally thought it was just the same big yellow yeah, you'd yeah. Think. Big Bird. But, no, like, yeah, it's, it's completely shoot, different. Yeah, like, all the Sesame Streets, like, locally. So. Yeah. Are there, like, so is, like, Oscar the Grouch different? And, like, I don't know. Elmo? I just know about Big yeah. Bird. Hmm. But yeah, like I was, I was blown away. I was like, oh my god, cool. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Many, so no, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> So, do you have a favorite Muppet? Oh, oh, oh man. Um, <laughs> all of them? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my favorite from the storyteller, anyways, was the Griffin, hundred percent. Yeah. Like the amount of work that must have taken to like make that thing and like make it move and all that kind of stuff. It's like a Hot, oh. big like two person size. Yeah. Thing. At least like that yeah. thing was massive. Yeah. Like, it definitely gave me the labyrinth vibes though. Very much yeah. so. Because oh, like yeah. because of those like little red dudes that like, yeah. like remove body parts, which is kind of messed up yeah. when you think about it. Like who was which like which was also Jim Henson's picture yeah, workshop, right? So <laughs> um, yeah, definitely that. But I also have a movie monster that was done by Frank Oz and Jim Henson that I will save for later. Okay. Well, Chris, do you have a, a Muppet of choice? Ooh, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, Beaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Beaker yes. easily. I gotta go with Animal. Animal is nice. amazing. Yeah. Did you ever so watch good. the Baby Muppets? That cartoon? Muppet Babies. Muppet Babies, yeah. I did for a little bit, and it was weird. Show. It was great. Rolf, like, so cute. Yeah, but like yeah. seeing them as babies, though, there was a part of me that was like... The Skeeter. It was weird, but it was just... And it was all like movie reenactments, yeah. too. Yeah. Because <laughs> like yeah, they had like some sort of agreement with like Steven Spielberg and Lucas where they, you know, they reacted or remade like Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> like the Star Wars clips in Muppet Babies like literal Star Wars clips because why not because yeah. you can why not you, you can do it <laughs> <laughs> alright I think <laughs> should, yeah. should, we, should we keep moving no I, I mean I could talk about Muppet Babies yeah. for, for longer <laughs> if, we, if you want but yeah Beaker is my answer Beaker yeah. love that guy gotta be Beaker yeah Beaker's fabulous uh, yeah well you mentioned monsters so we're gonna yeah. talk about some of our favorite cool monsters um who wants to start? Oh, this is always the problem. All right, I'll go. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I kind of sp- tried to spread mine out over the uh, decades. So I'm going with uh, one from the, I guess, golden years. 
from the classics, like The Mummy, Werewolf, oh, okay. Frankenstein, yeah. Dracula. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Nice. Yes. Love that movie. The original Classic. Nemo. Yep. <laughs> Granny Nemo. Actually, yeah. Yeah, he was going for the girl, so. Yep. Blueprint for Granny Nemo. No, L- Del Toro actually mentioned that. He yeah. watched it, like, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, and he was mad because he thought the creature was going to get the girl, and then he didn't get the girl, and <laughs> yeah. he was like, this is bull. Like, this I, is I, my gotta, fan fiction. Fix it. Yeah. No, like, actually, that's what gotta, he said. i got to write this wrong. Yeah, yeah, he's like, no, he's like, the creature deserved the girl more than the guy did, so he, <laughs> he literally made... I mean, yeah, he's got a point. ...shape of water, yeah. and then that's why, because he was, he, he was like, screw that. He's like, that guy didn't deserve her. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. I I will agree with, yeah. with Del Toro. It was, it was actually the first movie that Stephen King remembers watching. Oh. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, that era is, like, classic, filled with classic. Yeah, classics. and it's still super watchable. Yeah. But uh, there's a they, there's two guys, two uh, professional divers who played the monster. And uh, one of the dudes had to, like, consistently hold his breath for up to four minutes. Oh, my God. That's a long time. That is. Yeah, like, you, you don't think four minutes is a long time, but when you're under the water trying not Wearing to a drown. Suit, a yeah, like, suit. yeah. Like, there's... <sighs> Yeah, like count to, count four minutes. Oh, like that's ins- that's I, impressive. How is that even possible? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well wh- done, sir. And originally it was produced to be in 3D. Whoa. Which was in 3D, but I yeah. guess the 2D release just more for the. Well, yeah, that was a Ooh. that was a thing for a while in the 50s with the 3D yeah, glasses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they tried it with TVs in the 2000s, but nobody bought them. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I was gonna we did. Buy them. Did <laughs> you really? We yeah. <laughs> oh man. We had a 3D How'd TV. How'd that go? We, I love the crap out of that thing. It was yeah. awesome. But yeah, like we didn't buy it like right away. It was like later in life. But like we do a lot of movie nights at my house. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where it was like, all right, let's let's try it out. But yeah, I remember <laughs> sitting yeah, I there with everybody had their different colored glasses because they weren't all the same, right? And it's like, oh, I want the orange ones. I want the pink ones, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like it was a lot of fun. Like because I feel like it brought a lot of like movies to life for me, like Avatar especially. Like watching mm. that and seeing it, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Right? But... Yeah, we definitely had one of those. <laughs> that, 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 that's right. fine. But, so yeah. Someone bought one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just mentioning, like, it was a movement for a while yeah. where everything yeah. had, like, a 3D release. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah. It was, like, almost everything coming out. It was, like, you could get the normal, the 2D, or, or you could get the 3D. Yeah. Gravity in 3D was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I was no, the only thing one. I really remember from, like, that era was uh, the Jim Carrey um, Christmas. Um, oh, the Christmas story? Christmas Carol. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I remember, like, there was, like, the 3D glasses, I wear glasses normally, so, like, yeah. the 3D stuff doesn't really yeah. work with my eyes. You think they would have fixed that by now? Yeah, they may have, That's but... Uh, really hopefully. insensitive to the yeah. visually impaired. <laughs> But I remember as like a, a member of that community, I remember like a snowflake like yeah. coming towards me. But oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got um, to see the birds in 3D at Universal Studios in Florida. Whoa, that, that must be insane. That, that was tons of fun. Yeah. Uh, that would have been a good time. Yeah. Well, there's Anyhow. a lot of those 3D <laughs> rides, right? Yeah. At, yeah. At Universal. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, but uh, back to the creature of the black, <laughs> from the Black Lagoon. Uh, one fun fact I found out was um, after they shot the first three movies. The studio was just like, all right, we're done with this costume. Chuck it. The janitor found it, like all the pieces in the dumpster. Yeah. Like, hey, this would make a really good co- uh, Halloween costume for my son. So he just, just took it. Yeah, he was just <laughs> like, all right. Eventually, some of the pieces, I guess, were uh, returned and auctioned off or something like that. But yeah. yeah the janitor just found, like, the original suit. He's like, hey. I'm going to take it. They threw it out. Halloween's coming up. Yeah. My son. There was a lot uh, of that yeah. back in the day. Like, they just, like... And they would reuse like film, like film stock. Yeah. So like, there's movies and stuff that are completely lost to time because they just recorded over <laughs> wow. whatever that they had. That's crazy. You look at like, yeah, like throwing out the suit and stuff. That's yeah. wild. Right. I just, like, why would you? That's a, yeah. I'm I'm kind of a flabbergasted right now. Yeah. I'm not sure if they ever got the whole thing back, but at least some pieces. But hey, if, you know, if you see a free Halloween costume, don't pass it up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Especially if it's Especially outside like of the studio. Yeah. Grade. yeah if, you, if you're working at Universal, then yeah, <laughs> I'd do some dumpster diving. Just grab sure. it and run. Uh, uh, that's me. Yeah, my first pick. Um, it's actually almost a double pick. Ooh. Okay. Huh. First off, uh, when I saw this movie, I was very small, so the uh, the these creatures stuck with me. <laughs> And I haven't really watched this movie, rewatched this movie since, but I've seen clips of it, and the monsters are still very well done. It's the trolls from Ernest Scared Stupid. (laughs) 
nice. <laughs> Chris is like, why? Like, what the heck? <laughs> well, part of the reason is that they reused uh, some of the killer clowns from outer space nice. as trolls. Yeah. But uh, okay, yeah, that, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm with you now. But the uh, the concept of the troll itself, it would like turn kids into like wooden puppets. Oh, yeah, huh. that kind of terrified me as a child. Yeah, and this was an Ernest movie. This was an Ernest movie. Like Ernest goes to jail. Yeah, yeah. that that Ernest. But uh, that's, that's terrifying. Yeah, so I mean, basically, the like the kids come back at the end of the movie, but I mean, they get turned into like wooden puppets, so they're basically dead <laughs> in an earnest. Yeah, yeah, movie. Te- yeah, technically, I guess that's messed up. Yeah, like I remember watching it as a kid, and it's like, yeah, I'm not watching this again, and <laughs> I, ne- I never had. But I did look up some clips on YouTube, and yeah, the troll effects are like the creature suits look uh, really cool. Like I'm trying to. When I thought about monsters, like, I didn't want to do, like, the basic monsters, yeah. so I'm trying to grab ones that have, like, an impact on me. Oh, for sure. That's a yeah. great idea. So that he basically reversed pinocchio kids? Yeah. By the sounds of it, yeah. That's messed up. That is. That That's movie, like... Yeah, mo- that movie, you look that up, like, kids were scared of that. Uh, understandably. <laughs> yeah. Was it, like, did it advertise itself as a horror movie? I, or was it, it advertised like itself fun, as an earnest, earnest movie? Yes, right? it's a fun, wacky yeah. Yeah, shenanigans. Like that, like you don't think earnest and think trolls turning children into Pinocchio puppets. Like, that's messed up. Yeah. Who thought? Oh, I don't hmm. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, earnest is a thing that we could go off on. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. That's an episode itself. unto itself. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I could actually rewatch an earnest movie like now because it was kind of a different time. Yeah. I could. Yeah. He's a great character actor, though, uh, Jim Varney. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever see him, there's, like, cl- clips of him online, like, doing, like, just different characters. Oh, cool. And he had, like, a wide array of voices. And just there's one of him, like, just reading Shakespeare. And you're like, that's earnest? Yeah. yeah like, Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's mine. Cool. cool. I guess that leaves you. I guess it does. Yeah. Um, so for my first one, I'm actually going to go with a Del Toro. Uh, creature and that one's fawn oh, like yeah. the from pan's labyrinth just because like not only is it doug jones because doug jones is awesome but like the amount of time that must have taken like to create like to make the prosthetics and like to actually put on like doug jones that must have been intense it's just a beautiful beautiful creature i know he's not really scary but like because that's like the one that kind of like guides the yeah she's the one he's the one not that kind of like yeah that's which, that's which is still man. doug jones <laughs> yep yeah yeah it is um, Pale Man was terrifying, though. Yeah. Like, on a side note, like, he was scary. Like, scary, scary. But, yeah, like, the fawn was kind of, like, I remember seeing him just being, like, wow. And just being, like, so blown away with how beautiful he was. I thought well, I had to put him down for that one, for sure. But, yeah, that's my that's my first one. Nice. Chris? Still going. Okay. Number two, uh, I got to do zombies. Yep. Like, I know people yeah. are uh, pretty exhausted with the I zombie trope at this point. I don't think they are. I think a uh, lot of people are still into zombies. Th- there's still, like, stuff that you can do with them. Yeah. yeah. I think for the most, like, like within the last, like, 10 years, they, they kind of got saturated. Yeah. It was, like, the, the, the zombie renaissance. It's kind of fallen off again now. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. 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 Like, I guess you know, there's a couple coming out like, still. Yeah. But, well, like uh, that um, Zack Snyder one, like, in Vegas. Yeah. That's a zombie. Yeah, yeah we talked about out. it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think I don't think zombies are really going to go anywhere. Like I still no, think they're here that, to stay like, for sure. No, yeah, they're you know they've established themselves as like a classic. Yeah, movie definitely. Monster at this point. But even as a kid, that, that was my I was all about zombie movies. Oh yeah, before they were cool. Oh, <laughs> that oh was not <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, no, even as a kid, yeah, like the George Romero, like Night of the Living Dead, that movie's still scary. It is. Yeah. I know there's like that argument where it's like, oh well, the fast zombies like they're way scarier than the slow zombies. I disagree. Nah. No. The slow zombies, there's something about like, it's, oh, I don't know, it freaks yeah. me out. Kind of a force, an unstoppable force of nature. It just yeah. keeps coming. Like you can stay ahead of it, but yeah. like it only, just keeps coming yeah. and coming and coming. It doesn't matter what you do; it's gonna get you in the end. And yeah. It's just like okay. Whereas like I feel like a vast fast zombie, it's like you can see that thing running at you and you can be like, all right. Like, they're still scary, don't get me wrong. Like yeah, yeah, There's still something to be said about yeah. the fast zombies. But, like, for the for most sure. part, though, I would much rather take a fast zombie than a slow zombie, personally. Like, oh. a, like in a fight for your life? Yes. 100%. Mm. Well, if you're going to go, you can go quick <laughs> yeah. fast zombie. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I feel like slower, the slow zombies would be easier to navigate. Oh, you yeah. can kind of walk around them. Yeah. As long as they don't get, unless you're not, like, confronting, like, a cluster. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. 
I just feel like with the fast zombie, it's like as long as you had like an adequate amount of weapons, like you you got a better chance of taking them out. Yeah, and he can basically mm-hmm. wear leather because human teeth. Which no can, one. Yeah, human teeth can't bite through like mm-hmm. leather. Yeah, that's <laughs> there's one trope in the zombie movies. People are always running around in like t-shirts and tank tops. Yeah, yeah it's like, like find a leather jacket. Yeah. It'll greatly improve your quality of life. Grab a spear. <laughs> a spear. Yeah. Yeah. Just that, yeah. Yeah. Well, not to Chuck. It's like it's a poke. stab him in the head. <laughs> That's like the most practical zombie weapon. Wow. I never a thought of that. Point, a pointed stick. <laughs> yeah. A pointed, so a pointed stick that keeps you like five feet away. Yep. Yeah. Especially right, zombie apocalypse tips. With yeah. A, <laughs> with, medium with medium in it. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I've, I've, even as a kid, like I was saying, I was, just always loved zombie movies. Dawn of the Dead was one of the best, not even just horror movies, but that's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a pretty great movie. Speaking of Dawn of the Dead, haha. <laughs> Mr. Fiscal Media. <laughs> hey. I got this DVD. I used to have the VHS too, but I gave it to a friend. But I got it signed by Tom Savini. Nice. Oh, whom cool. I met. Uh, Tom Savini, if you don't know, uh, practical effects, I don't know, Godfather, the legend. He's also in the movie. Um... Oh, wow. He did effects for, oh, my God. His, his resume is insane. Uh, Friday the 13th, a bunch of Romero movies. That's he, was, um, he was Sex Machine in uh, From Dusk Till Dawn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got the, the gun. Yep. If you've seen that, you know what I'm talking about. That's hilarious. Yeah, so I got, I got to meet Tom Savini, super nice dude. If you're in uh, the Pittsburgh area and want to go to school for special effects, hit him up. I also got to meet George Romero too. Nice, nice, wow. nice dude. I feel it. Yeah, just a normal ass dude. Just an aside. Yeah. What do you think of like the Living Dead films? Uh, like Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, yeah, I think Day of the Dead is kind of where they should have. Cause yeah, he did go on to do a couple more. Yeah, like Land of the Dead. And, well, uh, uh, the Living Dead was kind of a a, a different universe. Yeah. Those, those ones you can't shoot, shoot the zombies in the head. They're kind of wackier as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Night, dawn, day. Yeah. The three classics. Yeah. That's yeah. all you need. The trifecta, right there. Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah. Zo- oh, actually, and another amazing uh, zombie movie I, I wanted to bring up because we've talked about it before. Yep. Reanimator. Yes. Oh, I'd... HP Lovecraft story. Yep. yep. With Jeffrey Coombs. <laughs> it was. It was great. That was one of my top three uh, B movies. Yeah. Yep. Jeffrey Combs or Combs? Yes. Who was? Wayun in Deep Space Nine. There, woo! He's trying to set that up. I, <laughs> you can tell. Took me a little while. He, just, he started gritting. I <laughs> yeah. was like, wait a minute. The obvious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will find a way every episode to tie it back to Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I hope you know, like, you're making a promise. Like, you better be able to keep it. Yeah. I'm batting a thousand so far, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep it going. All right, Mike, who's your next one? Uh, my next uh, creature is Swamp Thing. Nice. Nice. You know he's got a terrific design. Yes. Uh, yeah. DC comic character originally. Fun fact: he's called Swamp Thing because the creator couldn't think of a name. He's like <laughs> I'm working on the Swamp Thing. Oh, <laughs> love it. That's his name. It's like uh, oh, that works. Uh, there was like a, a really cheesy B-movie back in the 80s. I love that movie. It's like there's a love scene and somebody's yep. eating cucumber or something like that. It's strange. It's brilliant. <laughs> I don't so know about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, he also had a cartoon in the 90s, which was... Did he? I I, might, might have been late 80s, but uh, the theme song for the cartoon was they basically took Wild Thing, but they just... Put in Swamp Thing. <laughs> so it was like, Swamp Thing. Bam, bam. <laughs> well, like, that really like awkward, like bad overdub. So like, Swamp Thing. <laughs> do, do, do. No, swamp. It wasn't an overdub. Like, they, they made like, a bad. Swamp Thing song, like like I said, bass from Wild Thing. That's that's amazing. <laughs> it's so 90s, though. <laughs> the comics were pretty good, too. Yeah. Yeah. I can't uh, remember. There was one. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Arl Stein actually did. I, I think he did a small run on um, Swamp Thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. There's another. Oh, I can't remember. Who, I'm having a brain fart right now. Crap. A uh, really famous uh, comic book writer and artist from the '70s. Arthur Miller. Miller. Arthur. Uh, either way. But uh, spoiler alert: if you haven't read the comic books from the '70s, turns out Swamp Thing isn't really Swamp Thing. It's actually a piece of swamp that thinks it's Swamp Thing. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's, it's got a comic book logic. Yeah. Yeah. That was the twist. Yeah. It's like cause originally it was like a guy and he fell in a swamp and yeah with some chemicals and he turned into swamp thing. 
but then this run and I'm gonna have, oh, have to look it up. I'll yeah. send you a graphic. Okay. But like the art and everything for Swamp Thing is just oh, like, it's incredible. He's like a great just creature. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Didn't DC make like a TV show? There was one in 2019, and was it? I did it ever 2019? I think so. Really? I think yeah, because like when I was looking up a graphic for you, like Swamp Thing, like yeah. the, that was the thing that came up the most, and like I, that I, that creature design. I remember sweet. being on Crazy that. I haven't seen it. Um, I, I don't know if it was well received or not. I think it was. I think so. Did he did it even come out? Cause like, did it come out in twenty nineteen? Yeah, there was, so there was some this. weird stuff going on with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cause it looked cool. Yeah. I mean, he's a pretty sweet guy. So. That's my second one. Who, cool. who didn't someone weird direct that the the movie? Probably Wasn't he a big name. Uh, could be. All right. Well, I'll just. Yeah. Was it Zack right. Snyder? <laughs> Kill some time. No. Okay, so... I, I would totally watch the Zack Snyder cut of Swamp Thing. Oh, yeah. That would be sweet. Oh, yeah, there's 100%. the Snyder cut's actually officially out now. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. Hold on. Oh, oh we're getting tangled. Oh, yeah, she's... Wardrobe change. There, there so, it is. So, my second one is probably, like, the best thing ever. And I have a hoodie to commemorate that. Werewolves. This is I Heart Werewolves, so obviously that's yeah, my next got, one. You got some physical stuff, yeah. too. We'll physical media. I'm, but I'm feeling left out. No. It's okay. We'll get, stuff. You, we'll, get yeah. you, we'll get you some Swamp Thing stuff. There we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so my second one, obviously, is the werewolf. He's a uh, classic, yeah, I think. Werewolf. And um, I remember watching American uh, Werewolf in London for yeah. the first time and seeing the transformation on that, and I was just, like, gobsmacked. That's, like, one of the best, Yeah. like, visual effects scenes. Yeah. I think if, if I'm not though. mistaken, it's like the first time they actually showed a werewolf change on screen like in that extent. Yeah. And it's like obviously it's influenced every other werewolf um, movie or character since then. So it's like I think that one is just crazy. I remember watching actually like I don't know if it's a B movie. It might be Van Helsing like with Hugh Jackman. And yeah. I, I think Kate it's Beckinsale. considered a B movie at this point. It, what, it didn't do uh, well. Yeah, I remember generally liking okay. it. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was but good enough. I liked it, but like the thing I liked the most was the character design on the werewolf, and I was just like, oh, he's really cool because he was like massive and he had like the crazy ears and like the really like crazy snout, and I was just like, yeah. whoa. And that's like part of the only reason I still watch it is probably because of the werewolf design. The problem, <laughs> the problem is with werewolves is that. Yeah, when it's done well, it's, it's great. done well. Yeah, but when it's not done well, oh yeah, yeah it's bad. Yeah. It's really bad. But John Landis knew what he was doing. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That movie still holds up. I can have to watch that again. Oh, it totally does. It's one of those movies that you can watch. Like, that, I feel like that's a good introduction to, like, I guess werewolves. Like for his, sure. his buddy just gradually like Starts falling decaying. apart. Like, yeah. of the movie. I'd like see that was a cool thought too to be able to do that. Like, <laughs> like the. Like the entirety of that movie is just great. Yeah, <laughs> but the Nazi scene—that was nuts. The Nazi werewolves bust into the house and just like shoot up the place. Were we talking about the same movie? American Werewolf in London. Yeah. When did that happen? Uh, like halfway through the movie. I have to rewatch that. I don't remember that yeah. scene at all. No, I, I, I'm kind of blanking on that scene. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's one of the craziest scenes ever. Yeah. It's just nuts. Yeah, it's, it's, Are you sure you're not talking? Because I remember Shudder did like an anthology series where they did like wolf soldiers. And it was like these guys ended up oh, getting bit. Yeah, Creepshow did a thing. Is yeah. that what you're thinking? Yeah. No, is that no, what you're talking about? No, 100%, 100% in American Werewolf in London, there's a scene where it's just like this family in like a 1970s house. And werewolves <gasps> oh! dressed up as Nazi soldiers bust in and just like machine gun the crap out of the place. Okay, I kind of remember that, but I don't really remember it. Like, it, like it's tickling the back of my brain but could, it's not I probably pull it up I'll, I'll take your word for it yeah I don't know anyways <laughs> if you don't believe me look it up it yeah. is there but, um, it's yeah, there yeah anyways it's the were amazing. werewolf is definitely my my second pick for sure because if it has a werewolf in it I'm gonna watch it <laughs> okay before before we move on can yes. we not bring up Bad Moon oh yeah Bad oh my god yeah I forgot about that good okay so Bad Moon is a werewolf story obviously but it's told from the point of view of the family dog <laughs> pov dog that it, sounds awesome it, it's, it, it's actually fantastic it's on prime um i think it's also on shutter yeah yeah i was on netflix for a stint but i don't know if it is now but if you have time it is so no, good make time like make it's time. it's a great movie and it's like i've never seen something being told from like a dog's point of view in that sense so when they were like oh yeah and you're just following this dog around you're like wait a minute <laughs> yeah just around the neighborhood <laughs> like, hold on <laughs> But it's really good. Based on a book, it. too. Yeah, it is. It's based on a, a novel. I can't remember who it's by, but it was. Oh, it was. Sure. It's under the same name, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So if you like reading, or you like werewolves, or you like 
movies or from point the point of, of view point of, the of dog. dogs, <laughs> go check it out. That should be done more. It is amazing. All right, I have a challenging werewolf question. Uh-oh. Oh. If you put a werewolf on the moon, would he turn into a wolf mm. all the time? Oh. Like a perma wolf? Yeah. What side of the moon? See? <laughs> see yeah. what I see? Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, okay. So, so it depends on the side. Yeah, I would say that for sure. Yeah. Also, I just remembered Anthony Hopkins also played a werewolf. Yep. Yeah. Maybe did. Jack Nicholson as well, I think. Uh, yep. Yeah, he did. There was called Wolf. Yeah. Didn't uh, Del, uh, Benicio Del Toro? Yeah, he did because he, he was um, Anthony Hopkins' son. Oh, yeah, that was the same movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was crazy. They, actually, that had a wicked werewolf on werewolf fight scene. Cr- so good. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. <laughs> Bad Moon, check it out. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah, werewolves. Great. Awesome. Me? Okay, I guess. No, the it's... other Chris. <laughs> well, there's a lots of cr- there's lots of Chris's around, yeah, and we're all great. <laughs> Shout out to the Chris's out there. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, Chris's. <laughs> you know, you know, your buddy Chris is watching this and going, "Yes." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, dude? <laughs> What's up, Chris? Uh, my final one, a little obscure, but the oil slick monster from uh, Creep Show Two. I have no idea. I haven't seen it, but no. Um. Well, you're familiar with like the creep show. Like, oh yeah, ideas. It's like an anthology, and one of the short stories is um, a bunch of kids just hanging out on a raft in the middle of a lake, and this oil slick kind of creeps up on them, and then just starts picking them off one by one in pretty gnarly ways. But like, he, okay. like, like the the way the uh, the raft is built, like there's obviously like gaps between the yeah. planks. Yeah, it would come out and like grab it, grab it, it would stick to you and like pull your skin off and. Ooh. All I can think of is the uh, episode of uh, Next Generation where Tasha Yar dies, with the because she dies from like an oil monster. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, that sounds gory mm-hmm. though. Actually, uh, for Creep Show Two, you know how they have the kind of—it's not quite the Crypt Keeper, but they kind of have the same like yeah, yeah. same kind of host. Thing. He just doesn't really talk. Apparently, that was supposed to be played by Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! So, <laughs> that would have been so good. Yeah. Back to your boy. And uh, I don't know if it's just because I spent most of my childhood like swimming and fishing. Yeah. In that environment, I was very familiar with, it, and it was very easy to put myself in that situation. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> there's all of us. And then the guy at the end like has to out swim it, yeah. which I've had to do with leeches. Like I'd be like swimming into shore, and my dad's like, come on, come on. And I was like, it's like what? He's like, there's a leech behind you, and I'd look her up. Like, Big bastard too. Yeah, and I'm getting off topic here. <laughs> but yeah, I've had to outswim leeches, and I made it. I won. That's good. That's, well, you're still here. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I made it. But um, <laughs> but yeah, they went hard for the shoot. I guess one of the actors almost died of hypothermia, yeah. <gasps> and it was so bad, and the water was so cold, the dude turned green. He turned green? I didn't even know people could turn green. No. Oh, I hope he got paid well. <laughs> like, probably not. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, that's really all there is. Yeah, dedication, nice man. Dedication. Yeah, oil slick from uh, Creep Show Two. Huh. The, I think it was called the Raft. It was the yeah, terrifying. Okay, I cheated for my last one. Uh-oh. Uh oh. But there are three monsters from the same franchise. Oh yeah, you're fine. Uh, the Ghostbusters cartoon. <laughs> you had the Boogeyman, Grundle, and Sam Hain. Ooh. Uh, Boogeyman was voiced by Frank Welker, who did Megatron. Oh, nice. nice. So going back and watching it, it uh, it sounds like people are being hunted by Megatron. Oh, oh. that's actually, (laughs) that is kind of scary, too. (laughs) But uh, no, it's it's, it's kind of a freaky design. It's like the Boogeyman has like this giant demonic face and kind of like this little goat body type things. Very devilish. Uh, But I remember that being a classic one. Also, there was the Grundle, who was uh, a creature who would... uh, go to like uh, naughty kids and uh, encourage them to do keep doing naughty things and if they did the kids would eventually turn into a grundle themselves so it's kind of body horror type thing because from that yeah oh and sam hang was the uh just kind of the spirit of halloween he's just a guy with a pumpkin head (laughs) okay uh i remember him being like a classic character but yeah ghostbusters had some had some neat monsters. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's cool. Oh. Love a show title like that. You'd have to, wouldn't you? Yeah. We'll go, yeah. You need ghosts to bust. Can I give a, an honorable mention? Sure. The Borg. Yes. The Borg. Yeah, from Star Trek. Oh, okay, like, I won't uh, know it. <laughs> cyborgs, and they assimilate people, and they all join yeah. into this hive. They unwillingly turn you into, like, a cyborg. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Lovely. 
kind of like a really evil cybernetic uh, beehive. Yep. They rip out your eye. Yeah, but they give you a laser. It's true. It's, it's in your they head. still rip your eye out. Yeah, and you yeah. can no longer think for yourself. No, you're part of the collective. Yeah, the Borg. They're pretty cool. Yep. Well, they're evil as all hell. <laughs> Good monster. Yo, that's messed uh, well, up. Are they a monster? I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, I, that's I guess up. so. Villain. They're a good villain, yeah. yeah. I don't know, Mike. Do you have any honorable mentions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not right now. You got no. another monster for us? I do. Yeah. And it's more from like a, I guess it's a horror comedy, kind of, depending on which ending you see. But uh, Audrey 2 from The Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yeah. Nice. Classic. It I remember is. watching that for the first time, and I was just like, oh, my God, a giant plant that could eat people. Feed I was me like, Seymour. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was waiting for someone. Who's going to do their yeah. first uh, impression? Feed me. <laughs> Feed me Seymour. <laughs> but yeah, Rick Morianis too, so it was one of his films. Yeah. Um, they had an awesome soundtrack, obviously. It's a musical. If you have a bad soundtrack and you're a musical... <laughs> yeah, that ooh. is bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I, I could watch that movie over and over again, but it was funny because I didn't know about the second ending because the first ending I saw was the happy ending where it was like, you know, everything's good. Hmm. Nothing happens, and then the second ending I only recently watched, and I was blown away because I was like, I don't remember this being the <laughs> ending, and I was so what choked. Happened? I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, this is like the director's version. That makes sense. But um, the Audrey, Audrey too, was played by Frank Oz. Yep. So it's a little Jim Henson yeah. kind of yeah. connection there. But yeah, if we're gonna, circle. yeah. But if we're gonna mention uh, honorable mentions, I have to bring up Tim Curry's Darkness from oh, Legend. Yeah. Because nice. not only did the makeup take, like, forever, but the thing was terrifying. He's literally the devil. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to see Tom Cruise with uh, not straight teeth. <laughs> yeah, he had, like, the one in the middle. Wasn't yeah. That thing? I don't know if that was a yeah. real meme or not. I don't know. Like, but it was really it was one of his first films. And I remember my mom's like, oh, it's Tom Cruise. And I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> super, super young Tom Cruise. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, no, Audrey 2 and darkness they were they're were two of the ones that impacted me the most for sure yeah. i stayed i stayed away from venus fly traps for a little <laughs> while i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i wouldn't blame you the only place they grow naturally is in north carolina fun venus fly trap uh, fact why north carolina i would think like at the amazon yeah. or yeah, no. north carolina Crazy. actually doing doing great guys. i gotta bring it bring it back to canada yeah <laughs> oh yeah we, we have here's, a, here's, here's the fun fact okay it's not really media related or anything but the uh Provincial flower for Newfoundland is the pitcher plant, and it's a carnivorous plant. Nice. Really? Yep. I'm from the land of the trillium. Yep. Alberta rose. There you go. Well, it's, it's even in the name. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have it tattooed on me, so. There you go. There we go. Nice. There's some CanCon. What up, bro? <laughs> well. But yeah. That's our monsters. What, yeah. Hold on. What does it, what does it eat? It like flies bugs. and stuff. Yeah. Because it like it lures it in. Yeah, and it's got like a sweet thing, and yeah, I know like it yeah. looks like it's called a pitcher plant because it looks like a, a pitcher, right? Yeah. So there's like oh, okay. a top on it that closes, and it digests the insect. It's exciting. Yeah, there's like another one. There's another plant like that that eats frogs. Yeah. That's messed. That sounds like an Amazon thing. I feel like anything in the Amazon could kill you, though. No, nope, pretty sure it's North America. Really? Yeah. Or maybe South America. I don't, I'm not America's a botanist. I don't no. Know. Yeah. No, no. This, is, this is out of our area of. Uh, Expertise? Per, yeah, fake expertise. Fake expertise. <laughs> we know nothing. <laughs> we have Google. Yeah. yeah, Google's magical. Fact checked us on everything because we have no idea what we're talking <laughs> yeah, about. We the North be... Carolina thing is true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can fact check all you want on that one. All right. Okay. So to move on from this, we have to do a segue. 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 Ah, I think I'm wildly out of time. Yeah. <laughs> I still like it. We're though. practicing. Yeah. We've been training. <laughs> <laughs> We've been taking classes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talking about some of our favorite video and arcade games. Heck yeah. 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 Like old school cabinet arcade games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll kick this one off. Uh, for me, it, it's funny. Like, I grew up in Newfoundland. I lived in a literal fishing village for a while, <laughs> and we had an arcade. That's how big arcades were in the 80s. Oh, I miss them it, so much. It Everybody. doesn't matter where you lived. You could go to an arcade. Uh, and the first game, like I actually remember playing, is uh, Double Dragon from 1987. Nice. Wicked, it's yeah, fantastic game. They never ported it, right? Did they? Uh, not really. Like from the arcade to the, the home console. Yeah, I, well, you had the NES version. Actually, that's where Billy and Jimmy got their name because they didn't have names in the arcade version. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, but fun side-scrolling beat 'em up. Yeah, um, it's classic. 
and you if there were two people playing you had to fight each other at the end to get the girl yeah yeah i remember yeah. that yeah so, um, so i remember playing through that with my uh, older brothers that's weird um, there was a movie back oh. in the 90s that a lot of people would sooner forget that. yeah <laughs> Remember the speaking of creatures, they had a bobo or whatever, and he was like a big roided up guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I forgot about that movie. <laughs> I think most people have. There was also an animated series, like in the nineties really? as well. Yeah. Oh, cool. Like an anime? Uh, not an anime. Huh? Just uh, yeah, it was a North American thing. Hmm. That's cool. But Double Dragon. Yeah. Cool. We could go save the girl with yeah. your brother, and then beat up the baby, the crap out of them. Grab each other at the end. <laughs> do you want to go, or do you want me to go? I can go. Right. Um. I played the hell out of this game. I, I would shudder to think how much I spent on this game. NBA Jam. Yeah. <laughs> Love that game so much. I gotta, I gotta find myself a copy. Yeah, there's like the, special versions of it. Like there's versions that only like certain, uh, like NBA players have. Yeah, actually, uh, Justin Wang did a great video on it. Um, remember, like everyone when NBA Jam was popular in the the nineties. It was the nineties. Like, how come like Michael Jordan's not in this? And there was a licensing thing and all yeah. sorts of contracts. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, there actually is four, I believe, versions of NBA Jam where Michael Jordan is on the Bulls. Yep. Um, I, I can't remember. Who, I think Ken Griffey Jr. has one. I think Jordan has one, and then another dude. I can't remember off the top of my head. Another athlete. I think he has like two copies. I don't know why he need two, but he's got them. So yeah, Justin Wang. Look up uh, NBA Jam uh, Jordan. I mostly played the uh, SNES port, which was pretty solid. Yeah, it was okay. It didn't feel the same. Yeah. But yeah, like all the codes and the secret characters you unlock, and just the gameplay yeah. was amazing. NBA Jam. Is, He's on fire! <laughs> yeah, yeah. then you just start draining threes with fireballs. Yeah. Nice. And then you get big heads and <laughs> never-ending <laughs> turbo meter. Yeah. Cool. Apparently one of the programmers, uh, of course he's a basketball fan, but uh, he has his favorite team, and he has like the the rival team. I can't remember which teams it was though, but apparently he programmed in if his favorite team is facing off against his rival, and you try to hit a three pointer at the very end of the game, it will always go in. No hmm. way! Yeah, I love that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, NBA Jam, just an amazing game. Yep. That's uh, one like, more, one more like can you a say? quick yeah. basketball game. Yeah. Yep. It's very nineties. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh, I want to play NBA Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse Chris, he's gonna go play now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm calling in six. Uh, I'll see you see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess it's me. Uh, the first one I did was Donkey Kong because I remember playing that and it was like the funnest thing ever. Yeah. But like for like me, the original Donkey Kong. Yeah, OG, okay. OG Donkey Kong. It was pretty good. It's pre Mario Mario. Yeah. Jump man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I remember playing it quite a bit. Like we went to, um, <laughs> we went camping. This is how you know times have changed. And uh, camping, we, we went. No, no, we went to the store, <laughs> and um, there was a guy there, and he was like, it was like me, my sister, and our friend, and he's like, do you guys like arcade games? <laughs> yeah. All right, follow me. It sounds sketchy. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, you know, you're like you're you're like, oh yeah, trust this guy. This is fine. Random dude in the middle of nowhere. And he like opened up this garage thing, and it was just filled with arcade games. Because I guess it's like they had a ton that were just around, and like the guy who originally owned the store wanted to run the arcade too, but because they didn't get a lot of people, he had yeah. to shut it down. But like he still had the key, and like it still worked. Everything was still good. But if he saw kids around, he was like, "Hey, like come play," and like all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I remember being there for like hours. Yeah, it was awesome. But yeah, like That's tons a of dream the games to have a room full of yeah. all arcade cabinets. But yeah. Oh, one day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, Donkey Kong, I remember that one specifically for sure. Cool. Cool. Uh, I guess back to me. Uh, my next one is Golden Axe. Woohoo. Nice. Again, side scroller, beat him up. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Play, play with other other players. <laughs> uh, of course, it had a dwarf, a uh, male, and a female character. Some awesome names from this game, like the, the ma- male barbarian. His name is Axe Battler. <laughs> it's very 80s. I like it. I'm Axe Battler. And the villain's name was uh, Death Adder. Death Adder? It's like so yeah, it 80s fantasy type it's coming back to me. names. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, you used to pick up like magic potions and stuff like yeah. that. And it'd be like a special move. You save up your magic and the more magic you saved up when you finally unleashed it, 
would uh, vary from character to character. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you'd have to like yeah. Sparta kick those little munchkins carrying their sacks. Yeah, so there'd be like a, a scene where like you're camping and you have to. <laughs> yeah, and they kick the little guys. Kick, to get the, yeah, magic kick the lotion out of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Names. Not lotion. That's, <laughs> that's, a, different, that's yeah. a different game. I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> it puts the lotion on the skin. Oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I don't have too much to say about it. Um, came out in '89 and. It's just one of those fun sc- side scrollers from the era. Yeah, I still play it from time to time. Yeah, like they got one of those, you know, those compilation like twenty great games on one disc. Yep. Yeah. Golden Ask, Golden Axe, usually yep. pop, pops up on there. Yeah, and uh, you get to ride like little dinosaur dinosaur and dudes and like birds and do tail whips. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty wicked. Yeah, that's a good game. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's mine. <laughs> oh, you guys did that at the same time. It oh. fr- freaked me out. It's very uh. Zombie like. Children of Gorn. Oh. Yep. Um I'm gonna go Mortal Kombat two. Yep. Nice. Also a midway game who also did NBA Jam. Nice. Uh yeah, they just Mortal Kombat, it was huge, obviously. Yep. And they just really uh they set the bar pretty high with the first game. And uh Mortal Kombat two, they definitely cleared it. Yeah. They upped the violence, up the gore. Up to characters. Yeah, I played the crap out of that. Don't subvert expectations. Suppress expectations. Word. <laughs> For the day. Yep. Um, yeah, not a lot to say about Mortal Kombat 2. No. If you've played it, it's, it's, it's been turn, around turn for so long. fighting game. Yeah. 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 I, I did kind of feel like pretty cool when I was playing that game because I was like, because I was like, I played so much, I got really good at it. So yeah. I kind of like usually get like a, Small crowd of people behind me, like watching. Who, who was your player? Cheer me who on. was your character? Kung Lao. Yeah. Oh yeah. With the razor hat. Yep. The flying, flying drop kick. Sawing people in half for your That's... fatality. Dang. He did that. Yeah. And he's still playing Mortal Kombat to this day. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am. I played it last night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's yeah. That's all I got for Mortal Kombat too. Right, not, cool. not a very in-depth. Uh, um, well, I guess I'm gonna go classic with that one. It's uh, obviously Super Mario Bros. For that, yeah. because I played the crap out of that. It was funny because my sister and I both like loved Luigi, so we always fought over who was gonna be Luigi. Yeah, <laughs> really? are you talking about the first Mario Brothers or the Mario Brothers arcade game? Yeah. Um, probably more so like the first Mario Brothers. Okay. I never saw the arcade game. Yeah, which kind of sucks. There was a. Uh, why it's called Super Mario Brothers was that there was a Mario Brothers arcade game. Oh, cool. And it was I didn't just like a single screen, yeah. uh, two players, Mario and Luigi, yeah. and like uh, turtles would come out of pipes. Yeah. That, yeah. that was pretty much it. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Hit no, him I, from below and yeah, yeah. kick him off. So. I unfortunately didn't get the chance to play that. Yeah. But yeah, I remember playing the first one, or like not the first one, but the Super Mario Bros. And it was just like, yeah, my sister and I, we fought over who played Luigi all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody liked Mario. Huh. Yeah. yeah. That's usually not well, how it goes. But why'd, Yeah, why'd you not like Mario? Ah, he was overhyped. I like Luigi better. I don't know. Yep. I felt bad <laughs> for Luigi. I felt like he got all... Everybody was like, Mario! It's like, also, Luigi. Also, was a bad video game adaption movie. Yeah, <laughs> another terrible one. Like, <laughs> terrible. I, don't, I remember watching half of that movie and being lost, and I was just yeah. like, what is going on? It has a special place in my it, heart. It, oh, yeah, it does. It's, it's one of those... It's, uh, it's bad, but it's good. Yeah. Yeah, because I got... I remember... Uh, I, back in the day when video stores were still around, uh, the studios would send out like a, like copies of the movie before it was actually officially released. Yeah. So you get like the like every like I don't know ten minutes you get like text scrolling like this is not for resale. Yeah. And so I got to see that movie like before it was in a uh, video stores. Oh, cool. Which made me feel cool because I was like five. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I was so stoked about the movie because like I was super into into, into, yeah. into Nintendo. Yeah, the movie was wildly confusing. Yeah. yeah. But after a few watches, I'm like, okay. Monkeys. I like it. <laughs> yeah, and Yoshi was... It, it was it was a disaster. That, uh, the, but that, I still like it. Uh, when they transform Toad into, like, the little headed guy? Yeah. That, yeah, that was kind of freaky. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And they had that weird, like, spongy, yellow, that, yeah, goopy yeah, stuff yeah, all over the place. Which was apparently, like, the king... Shedding or something? Yeah, yeah. no, the, uh, the king got turned into a fungus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, kind of like reclaiming yeah. it. And like, yeah, it was yeah, a, weird, it was a weird, weird movie. Really weird movie. But you know what? 
I like it. Oh, it's still it's still like a fun movie, but like watching it, you're still sitting there like, what? <laughs> the yeah, funny thing like, is they teed it up for a sequel at the end, and then <laughs> nothing was done. Could you imagine if they did a sequel now? Yeah. I, I, I think the it production probably, of that was a little bit cursed as well. Oh, fair if enough. If you look into the history of it. Yeah, it's got some some skeletons. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't know that. Cool. But yeah, Super Mario Bros. Nice. Cool. What about you, Mike? Uh, last one. You're going to notice a pattern. It's the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. Nice. Four-person cabinet. Nice. Um, have you got your four turtles. You fight across New York. That's it. It's <laughs> fun. I was, like, I was actually going to do that one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but Donatello was my, my turtle. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. That is, that is the correct answer. Nice. Yeah. I don't know if he actually had, like, a better hitbox, but it felt like it. Yeah, it seems. That's yeah. all that matters. It seems like it. Yeah, it's yeah. in your head. You're like, yeah, this is the better character. Yeah. Uh, I mostly played it. I mostly played, like, the Nintendo port. Like, I did play yeah. the arcade game, but I had the... It was called Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, because there was a Ninja Turtles game that came out before. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, playing that. Putting in the Konami code. Yeah. Get nine lives. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. Yep. You yeah. still remember or that? Or select start yeah. if you have wow. two players. True. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm impressed, guys. Holy crap. I played Contra a lot. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 All right. I'll just keep, I'll keep the, the show moving, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to switch my answer because I was going to do kind of like a twofer. Yep. Ninja Turtles, but also the X-Men game, yes. which is basically the same game with a different skin. I think there was like a six-person version of that. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, it was like Cyclops, Nightcrawler, Dazzler, Colossus, Storm, and crap. Wolverine. How do you forget Wolverine? Yeah. Hmm. Kind of the hmm. 80s highlight characters for like the X-Men. Yeah, Dazzler point. was a weird choice. Yeah. yeah. But... Okay, since we already kind of covered that, I'm going to go with a... The game itself wasn't that great, but the cabinet, the actual, like, video game itself, the physical apparatus, I guess you could say, Afterburner. Oh, yeah. Where, like, you sat in, like, a basically a... I don't know, what would you call it? It's like, not really a cage. A cockpit? Yeah, yeah. And it would move yep. as you move the joystick. Interesting. It was, like, a not just a video game, but a, a bit of a roller coaster. Yep. Or at least cool. a carnival ride yeah yeah and so probably yeah. one of the first arcade games that kind of had that moving i would think so yeah yeah it just the, the game itself is just you're just flying around in a fighter jet just blowing stuff up yeah cool. but you actually get to like it actually moves you around you can nice. tilt you get to reenact forward. uh top gun yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> basically because i think you're flying an f-14 in that pretty sure yeah and there's still room for you to like you can put i keep blocking that camera <laughs> you can just fist pump because it's got a rockin' soundtrack too yeah if i remember right okay cool it, it's basically top gun the video game without the licensing <laughs> pretty Fair. much pretty much it's not realistic <laughs> at all either it's <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you have a hundred missiles but it's a video game and a ride yeah so yeah that's the nice. iconic pretty cool. 80s one for yeah. sure it's a pretty cool one afterburner yeah if you can find one buy it for sure cool and, uh, and send it to me send it to me <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for shipping. Oh my yeah. god. Okay. Uh, but yeah, my last one is The House of the Dead. Yep. It's okay. like a classic zombie shooting game, and I spent hours and probably way too much money. It's a light <laughs> gun game, one. right? Yeah. 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 As soon as you said that, I was automatically teleported to a movie theater lo- yep. lobby. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I think one of those was like in every movie theater. Absolutely. It's one of those I, cabinets that seemed to be everywhere. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it was like one of those ones where it's like it, it was almost like expected. Yeah, you almost couldn't escape it. Yeah, so... But yeah, I just remember spending way too much money and way too much time shooting zombies. Yep. So... And uh, Uva Bowl made a movie about that game. (laughs) Yes. Really? And I I remember watching it. (laughs) The only thing I remember about that movie is they put in clips from the arcade game randomly. Yeah, like like, totally... Not even really in context. It would just be... Weird. Yeah. Okay. It was was a terrible movie. And there was a version where he typed called Typing of the Dead. (laughs) (laughs) I kind of love that. Yeah. So the zombies would approach and they'd have like <laughs> die written across them. You have to type in D- D-I-E. Like, All right. That's hilarious, yeah. actually. How I love that. We, how can we make zombies educational? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. School union out, there, union out there is like, okay, look, I know it promotes violence, but they'll be really good typers afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> their, their home row will be just killer. Better, yeah. better than Mavis Beacon teaches typing or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who apparently wasn't a real person. Mavis Beacon is not a real person. What? So they made her up for this typing program. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. And the more you know. Yeah. All of a sudden, my typing feels tainted. Yeah. I've been typing a lie. I've been typing a lie. <laughs> Mavis, what happened? What are you doing, Mavis? Um, yeah. Anyone got anything else? Um, Matthew McConaughey has a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> What's that up last time? I know. <laughs> you're, just, you're just trying to mention it every time. Just help my boy out. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Because he needs my bump. Yes, he's, yeah. totally. He's like, oh, if I could just get that Chris cosign. Reach, reach that for you, Matthew. So we got your back, yeah. man. If you, wanna, if you ever want to co-host Matthew, I mean, you're welcome on Medium yeah. at any time. You, you joke, but like, what if that actually happened? <laughs> like, then I think we it'd would be all right. It. Yeah, it'd be all pretty right. all right. It'd be all right. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh God! Um, <laughs> yeah, that pretty much wraps up this yeah. episode of Media Minute. We yeah. are going on hiatus next week. Yes, we're going to be doing some things in the background. So things are going to look a little different when we come back, but we're still coming back. So we'll see you next time. Make sure you hit that bell, like, subscribe. Reminder again: we're on Bitchute. Bitchute. If you want to catch up on older episodes, I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski, and I'm Rachel Edge. We'll see you next time. <laughs>